high Broadway, the bun, tense, expecting the worst, only those with important business venturing outdoors, while in Chinchow, at the airfield, Major Herata, commanding the 8th Japanese Flying Squadron, gives final instructions to the best pilot in the service. Instructions that ended in a horrible episode that shocked the world. Calm, cold messengers of death on their way to send a shower of destruction from the sky. It's not far from Chinchow to Shanghai, and it won't take long for the crack 8th Squadron to reach their objective. The native city of Chapai on the north bank of the Suchow River in Shanghai. One breathless moment, and then all hell breaks loose. It's a scene that beggars the imagination, a chapter from Dante's Inferno. The marksmanship of the flyers is uncanny, and almost as soon as it starts, it's over. Streets that were once busy hives of activity, now a sad parade of ruins, clammy with the shadow of death. Destruction everywhere, and things that were once human beings lying where they fell. The occupation is almost complete. Marines from the Japanese naval forces seemingly in command of the situation. But the Chinese have stopped the invaders dead in their tracks, keeping them from going further in a stubborn defense that earned the admiration of the world. Only the poor natives flee in panic from the shambles they once called home. Hurrying, they don't know where, fearful, terror-stricken in every conceivable means of transportation across the Garden Bridge to take them and their miserable possessions far away. And yet, nobody has the nerve to actually call it war, just because war hasn't been officially declared. Japan claims they're trying to rid the section of bandits. China says she's protecting herself from invasion. World powers write notes, and the League of Nations sends a committee to study the situation. Meanwhile, American Marines patrol their section of the international concession along the Suchow River. It's a tough job keeping the natives from storming the settlement, the only place where they can feel free, because so far, the Japanese haven't dared to invade this part of the city. And the Marines have to protect American interests, too. Only a few natives at a time are allowed inside to provide against rioting and panic. But why, every once in a while, a desperate native takes a chance and sneaks through. England, too, adds her unit to the foreign army watching over the lives and property of their own citizens. And the drums of war come up like thunder out of China across the bay. 